Hello, my name is Eric Briones, and I am presenting the geology of gold with a small emphasis on gold in California. I will start off by going over the basic geology of gold. Here you can see in the picture some gold embedded in quartz. Veins of quartz are known to commonly house gold and are often followed by miners when searching for it. Here is an example of a vein quartz with a good amount of embedded gold. A vein like this one would be something that miners actively search for when mining. What exactly is gold, you may ask? It is a mineral, and as I am sure you all know, it is highly sought after. This is due to its high value per ounce. As of recording this video, the price per ounce of gold is $1,847. You can see in this picture on the left what one ounce of fine gold looks like, and how it is a relatively minuscule amount for such a high value. Gold is also an element on the periodic table. As you can see on the picture on the right, the symbol for gold is AU, its atomic number is 79, and its atomic mass is 196.967 grams. Moving on to the physical properties of gold. Gold is a native element. This means that it is an element that occurs naturally in a relatively pure form. As can be seen from this picture, it has a metallic luster. It has no cleavage, but it does have a jagged fracture. It also ranges from 2.5 to 3 on Mohs hardness scale. This means that it can be scratched fairly easily. Gold also exhibits a golden yellow color. Continuing on to some uses of gold, there are quite a few of them. I'm sure most of you know of one of gold's more common uses as jewelry. It is also used for coinage, dental work, optics, and medicine. Gold is also an excellent conductor of electricity and is used in a wide array of electronic components. Moving on, we probably want to know how gold is formed. Gold starts dissolved in a hot water solution under high pressure with other substances such as sulfur. This hot water, known as magmatic water, rises to the surface of the earth through convection. As the magmatic water nears the surface, it cools and lowers in pressure. As that occurs, it allows the minerals it carries to precipitate. The gold then becomes a solid along with other trace minerals within the water. Now what about gold in California? Pictured here is the largest gold nugget ever found in California, weighing in at 103 pounds. At today's price, that makes it worth over $3 million. That's a pretty penny for a hunk of metal. When talking about California geology and gold, we of course cannot forget to mention the Sierra Nevadas. Gold is concentrated in areas of high volcanic activity and faulting. The Sierra Nevada mountain range is no exception. Large granite intrusions beneath the Earth's surface is largely responsible for the formation of gold in the Sierra Nevadas. Natural hot springs, faulting, and volcanism are all geologic features that are present in the Sierra Nevadas that indicate large amounts of gold. Now, of course, the gold rush also comes to mind when talking about gold in California. Gold within the bedrock eventually becomes exposed to the Earth's surface. This allows it to be eroded away. This means that it breaks off from the original source into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces are then transported by streams and eventually, due to their density, are deposited in columnar parts of the stream. This occurs because gold has a higher density and is heavier than most sediments that are carried by streams. This all comes together to create what are known as placer deposits. These placer deposits are what eventually caused the California Gold Rush with the discovery of gold at Stutter's Mill along the South Fork American River, as can be seen in this iconic picture. I also want to include the geology of a specific gold-bearing area near Death Valley National Park. That would be the geology of the Amargosa Mines in the Salt Spring Hills. Once again, Large granite intrusions beneath the Earth's surface are responsible for the gold in this area. These granitic masses force their way up, 
and eventually come in contact with limestone, forming a contact zone. This contact zone changes the limestone into metamorphic rock. These metamorphic rocks include hornfills and gold-bearing scarns. The part that is most interesting of this area is that gold can still be found there today. The best part is you can go and prospect it yourself because this particular area is on BLM land, which means Bureau of Land Management. Just be sure you are not on someone's filed claim and avoid prospecting within Death Valley National Park. To briefly summarize the last slide with a visual representation, here you can see the large granite intrusion forcing its way up and coming into contact with marble in this case. This forms a very large contact zone with the marble almost all the way around the granitic mass. This contact zone creates a state of metamorphism in the marble, or in the case of Salt Springs Hills, in the limestone, transforming the rock into metamorphic rock. A gold-rich ore body forms around the contact zone as well as scarns. Again, a very similar process occurred with the limestone and granite intrusions at Salt Springs Hills, creating an area rich in gold. To conclude, California is a very gold-rich state. Many of the amazing geologic features in California are great indicators to gold-bearing areas. Gold will always be the valuable resource that California was famous for. Lastly, while gold mining is not seen as profitable as it used to be, at least not in California, it can be a great and fun way to experience the results of Earth's geologic history in person.